So no matter what happens, no matter who you are, no matter what your type is, no matter what your history is, no matter what you identify with, do not take this video at face value. Because in this video I'm going to be employing stereotypes, these things that I hate so much and I do believe can cause a great deal of harm to people, in order to elucidate the ways in which cognitive functions within any given cognitive stack interact with each other in order to create the sum total of a cognitive predisposition. And like I said in my personality type and career video, just because a person has a cognitive predisposition it does not mean they should not be pursuing something completely different. So in this video in which I'm taking the 16 types to a fantasy landscape and assigning them a D&D style class, it is simply based upon parameters of cognitive predisposition, rather than parameters based upon what path a particular individual of any given type would find greater happiness and indeed success following. So if I haven't made it already perfectly obvious, as a big disclaimer, stereotyping does not work. Stereotyping is ineffective. People do not operate according to stereotypes. Heck, people can't really be divided into 16 types. Rather, every single person will be inhabiting a region that can be loosely categorized as a personality type. So for those of you who are still here and I haven't bored senseless with that there disclaimer, I do want to jump right into the video, but before I do so, I want to give a shout out to my buddy Chris on the Suicide. Psych. He's already made a video on this very subject and he actually took a really neat approach. He essentially assigned people classes based upon the magnitude of any given type's cognitive functions, essentially their cognitive preferences. As many of you already know, CPT doesn't actually employ a cognitive function preference model. But Chris uses a hardcore Jungian model in which he goes right back to the source and employs typology based upon the original words of Carl Jung. But for this video, I'm rather taking the average of a person's cognitive predisposition based upon the relationship of all their functions within a stack and assigning each extremity of the 16 types a certain predisposition, a certain natural expertise based upon this cognitive average, this cognitive personality, if you like. So I want to start with the introverted sensing dominance. First up, let's take the ISFJ. We have an individual who is very much connected to the kind of balance, the equilibrium of life. They're taking in plethoric social, emotional information through extroverted feeling connected to an extroverted intuitive lens. And then they're really refining it, they're condensing it. They're condensing all of this information, analyzing it, reflecting upon the past in order to bring it all into accord, in order to create a kind of balance, in order to determine what is harmonious and what is not. Out of all the possible classes within a D&D setting, I cannot help but assign this type the Druid. A true neutral class who is intrinsically connected to the order and balance of the world. They go straight into the very core of what drives harmony. This is why they're connected to nature. They're connected to the primordial driving forces behind reality. And there is no class I can think of that is better suited to the ISFJ than the Druid. Someone who is so intrinsically connected to the natural order of the world. Someone who strives, who spends so much time preserving the balance. Someone who is so finely tuned to the harmonious atmosphere and yet so precisely analytical in understanding the microscopic transactions that make up the balance. So oftentimes ISFJ have a very neutral persuasion in terms of alignment because they're interested in preserving the balance, they're interested in maintaining harmony and they'll connect with a great intensity with the concrete and tangible, the very core primal driving forces of reality. ISFJs are typically incredibly wise, and this is why they'll typically have a very high wisdom score within a D&D setting. They're very reflective, they take in so much social information, especially in a group setting, and then refine it. Refine their understanding of society, refine their understanding of what is normal, what is acceptable, what is appropriate conduct, what frameworks must be followed in order to preserve the peace, in order to keep society functioning. But more than that, how do we keep the human race functioning? How do we survive as a species? And the druidic approach to this is to consult nature, to consult what has happened in the past, to consult what is eternal, what is constant. And always so hyper aware of just how vulnerable this balance is, just how vulnerable this tangible, concrete force of nature is to the selfish, chaotic tendencies of the human race. And now I want to jump into the ISTJ. Again, out of all the classes, I cannot think of a class better suited to the ISTJ than the cleric. Why is that? Because the ISTJ is oftentimes so misunderstood in their depth of introverted feeling, in their faith, in their strength of character. So oftentimes the ISTJ is seen as this kind of hardcore extrovert thinker, this mechanic, when so much more than that, the ISTJ is a very deep introverted feeler who forms very deep connections to the abstract logic of the external world. Much like the balance-preserving druidic ISFJ, the ISTJ cleric is very much interested in order, but order according to their belief system, order according to the will of the deity that they serve. And it is this raw power of belief, it is their conviction in who they are that allows the ISTJ to channel the wrath of their God, to channel the benevolence of their God, 
in order to have real tangible effects upon a concrete world. And it is the extrovert thinking authority that not only follows and upholds the law of their God, but also enables the ICJ with their extroverted intuitive lens to seamlessly navigate a battlefield synergistically combining martial prowess alongside divine spellcasting ability. And now let's take the extroverted sensing dominance. First up, let's take the ESTP. We have someone who's very much connected to the tangible, concrete, external world, but perceive this world alongside an extroverted feeling codec. The ESTP is hyper aware of how they can contribute to a group, while all the while having that extrovert sensing dominant function pragmatism. Yes, they are socially oriented, but they're also hyper connected to the concrete, to the tangible. And the introverted intuitive, introverted thinking frameworks in their divergent stack allow this type to excel at a range of roles and to have a rather holistic skill set that can adapt to the needs of the situation. And therefore, I don't think there's any type better suited to the class of fighter, not in any way, shape or form because they're boring, but because they can fit within the various niches of the fighter class. The fighter can excel at a range of different combat styles. The fighter is a jack of all trades in so many ways while also having excellent persuasion skills in the form of Intimidate, and the ability to even use their persuasion skills to effectively taunt opponents. I can even channel their persuasive skills into combat, such as in the form of the taunt ability. The fighter out of all the classes within D&D is, in my opinion, one of the most naturally versatile, whilst oftentimes being incredibly attached to the tangible, to the concrete, and this is why it so well suits an extroverted sensing, extroverted feeling dominant stack. Because the fighter picks their opponent and then they employ a variety of different skill sets according to the needs of the social situation, according to the needs of the group, in order to contribute in the best possible way. And while also having that pride factor that so often goes hand in hand with that unconscious, introverted feeling conversion to auxiliary. And now let's take the ESFP. Out of all the 16 types, again, painting the extremities of any given type, the ESFP is incredibly, incredibly individualistic. Their strength of character knows no bounds. The ESFP does what they want, when they want to do it. And the extrovert sensing, extrovert thinking dominant stack so often takes a hammer and anvil tactic to any given situation. I'm going to overcome this with my strength of character. I'm going to overcome this with sheer determination. And it's no surprise that so oftentimes heroic protagonists of films and indeed anime are ESFPs. Because in terms of natural cognitive predisposition, the introverted feeling, introverted intuitive diversion stack pushes an agenda forward of great individualism, of great transformation of self to a self which is better than the self of yesterday. And the sheer intensity of this type, the sheer relentless strength of character, lends this type perfectly to a barbarian class, not in any way, shape or form because they're stupid. Only an idiot would think a barbarian is stupid. No, because they're incredibly, incredibly individualistic. They live according to their own laws while at the same time being incredibly attached to the tangible concrete world. Extrovert sensing, extrovert thinking is perfectly well suited to a barbarian skill set, a person who is so incredibly connected to the concrete natural world. They have high wilderness law skills, for example, while also having an incredibly proficient combat ability. But more than anything, it is the strength of character of the barbarian that gives them that high constitution, that gives them that high hit point score and develops that kind of strength that so often goes hand in hand with the class. The ASFP can achieve incredible feats of athletic ability because they push themselves relentlessly through any kind of discomfort, through any kind of pain, in order to overcome the opponent through sheer determination. And this is why, out of all classes, it's the ASFP who gains access to the barbarian rage ability, to the near magical ability to be able to ignore damage received because they can shrug off any wound to keep going, keep pushing forward towards a version of themselves which is even better than the one they are right now. And now let's take the introverted intuitive dominance, starting with the INFJ. I'm gonna be a bit boring here and assign the INFJ the wizard. Not because I think the INFJ has that natural, generic intelligence associated with the wizard class, but rather because the INFJ, more than any other type, often needs to prepare in advance in order to be able to handle a situation, while at the same time having this incredibly holistic, introverted thinking, introverted intuitive framework. This one's very much parallel to the wizard's absolutely massive selection of spells, with the caveat being that a wizard must not only prepare their spells in advance of any given situation, but also have to rest before going into it. And once they've used up their spells, they must rest once again. From that point onwards, once they are fatigued, 
they must withdraw into their introverted, intuitive, introverted thinking frameworks in order to essentially recharge. So yeah, the wizard has an incredible access to knowledge. They are so often incredibly wise in the ways of the arcane. And their intellect is so often directed towards understanding the very fabric of reality. And so often they're just as much a philosopher and indeed a pacifist as they are a magic wielding combatant. And so oftentimes a wizard would prefer to be locked away in their tower conducting experiments and reflecting upon various abstract topics than they would be in the midst of a chaotic combat situation. And this is why the Iron Shade Wizard often stands back from the crowd. And all the while this extroverted feeling authority pushes this wizard to serve the group in the best possible way that they can. In order to memorize a suitable array of spells, not only to inflict damage upon the enemy, but so oftentimes more importantly, to assist members of the group, and oftentimes use much more subtle means of overcoming a situation. And this is why I assigned to the INFJ the highly flexible wizard class, who so oftentimes will prioritize the debuffing of enemies and crowd control than more direct hammer and anvil kind of direct damage tactics. And now let's take the INTJ. Just like the INFJ, the INTJ is intrinsically connected to the abstract and therefore they are also a magic user. They're very much arcane in nature. They're still very much interested in understanding the underlying fabric of reality. However, to the INTJ, I assigned the Warlock class because their kaleidoscopic introverted feeling, introverted intuition, gives a type of more direct link to the various planes from which magic springs. The Warlock tends to have an incredibly strong sense of character and a strong conviction in their own abilities. And this is why they are willing to engage with the darker forces in order to overcome any given situation. The INTJ has faith that they will hold on to their values and identity, and they will not be subject to the whims of devils and such. Rather, they believe in their own capacity to keep on top of any given situation, because ultimately they are in control, and the darker forces they may very well enact pacts with are nothing more than means to an end. And this is not to say in any way, shape or form that the INTJ is evil but rather that the ITJ of all the 16 types is the one who is able to gaze into the abyss and remain unscathed, and remain true to who they are. And so this warlock may be chaotic good, for example. Just because they're engaging with darker forces, it does not mean they are intrinsically in any way, shape or form evil. And yes, that's a very utilitarian attitude. And similar to the ISTJ, the INTJ has an extra bit of thinking authority that enables them to wield weapons, to wear armor, for example, while synergistically combining this with a very direct and efficient application of arcane spellcasting. And now let's jump to the extroverted intuitive dominance. I want to start with the ENFP. This is an individual who is very adaptable. They can take in the extroverted intuitive, extroverted thinking atmosphere and essentially improvise upon it, perceive a vast array of objective components while also inserting themselves as an individual, a highly charismatic and steadfast individuality into this extroverted, intuitive, extroverted thinking landscape. And this is why I posit the ENFP as the bard of a d, d setting. Because yeah, they have this incredibly strong charisma emanating from this very specific and concrete introverted feeling, introverted sensing identity. And this enables them to cast spells, this enables them to use their raw power of personality to cast spells on a highly intuitive level, to draw upon their own charisma in order to channel through force of personality, arcane magic. And it is this force of personality that allows them to perform to such an extent as to actually be able to influence creatures through music, to influence their comrades through music. And out of all the types, there's a huge jack of all trades. They have a huge skill set. They can learn any skill they want to. They can perform music not only at the behest of group morale, but also to tangibly affect the world around them, even cause damage to creatures, and inspire their comrades to fight harder than they ever have before. Extroverted intuition and extrovert thinking can take any situation in its stride. All the while, this highly charismatic, divergent stack, providing the type access to arcane spellcasting and near magical bardic ability. And now let's take the other extrovert intuitive, the ENTP. Out of all the types, I feel this type is most suited to the rogue. Not because they're conniving, not because they're cunning, but rather because, again, they have a huge skill set that they can employ the high intelligences, introvert thinking, introvert sensing specificity to master. And they can bring these skill sets forward to serve the group, to serve this extroverted intuition, extroverted feeling, social utility. But it is also their ability to framework social situations that allows this type to be highly persuasive, to gauge the emotional responses of enemies, for example. And through the power of words, of dialogue, essentially weave themselves out of any given situation. 
The Vogue is an incredibly cunning and dexterous type with a huge array of skill sets that require an incredible attention to introvert thinking detail. And in my opinion, there's no better natural predisposition than that of the ENTP in order to acquire mastery of all these various dexterous activities alongside this hyper-awareness of the external emotional atmosphere. And now let's take the introverted thinking dominance, first up with the ISTP, and yes, I'm giving you the ranger class just as you want it. Oftentimes I hate stereotypes, I don't really think they're concurrent with natural cognitive predisposition based upon an accurate representation of cognitive functions, but in this instance, the ISTP is a pretty good ranger. Their introverted intuitive, introverted thinking dominant stacks allow them to perfect their own unique, individualized way of frameworking any given situation, while all the while being connected intrinsically to the concrete with the extroverted sensing authority. And with this extroverted sensing authority function connected to an extroverted feeling codec, the ISTP is performing and perfecting this holistic skill set, containing as it is the entire laws of the world in which they live. At the behest of a cause, at the behest of a highly humanitarian and altruistic agenda. And now let's jump to the INTP. I believe the INTP is perfectly suited to the alchemist class because the INTP has very specific introvert thinking, introvert sensing frameworks. They're constantly tinkering, they're constantly refining the frameworks, they're constantly refining the details and fine tuning various definitions. And alchemy, chemistry, requires this kind of attention to detail. All the while, the extroverted intuitive or thoughty function, acting oftentimes according to a highly proficient networking ability, gives the type of highly experimental agenda. Yes, they're refining the details all the time. But through the refinement of details, they're finding new and exotic recipes. They're finding more and more effective ways in order to use alchemy, in order to not only serve the needs of their group, but even inflict damage upon the enemy. And furthermore, it's the incredible networking ability of the INTP that allows them to forge the connections necessary in order to procure the various exotic ingredients necessary in order to form these concoctions in the first place. And now let's take the extrovert thinking dominance. First of all, let's take the ENTJ. I believe this type is perfectly suited to the role of sorcerer. Because you see, the thing is, the ENTJ tends to get very misrepresented. People take one look at the dominant function and they just assume, oh, well, this person's always concerned with the order. Oh, well, this person's obviously a commander. They're more interested in results. They're more interested in a tangible, objective, extrovert thinking external landscape. When so oftentimes the ENTJ's success is attributed to their introverted intuitive, introverted feeling divergent stack, pushing them forward with an incredibly high charisma. And the ENTJ so often seamlessly dips into an extroverted feeling codec from the position of the dominant stack in order to, through sheer force of personality, get themselves through any situation they want to and achieve what they want to achieve. And their introverted feeling hyperdivergent function makes them oftentimes so relentless and unyielding in producing the change they want to in the real world. And so I, of all the types, I will give this type the highest charisma score because of this through sheer personality and determination that this type is able to cast with an equal level of proficiency to that of the wizard, incredibly complicated and powerful arcane spells. And now let's take the ESTJ. You have someone with an incredibly strong introvert sensing, introvert feeling, sense of identity, of conviction, of what is right and what is wrong, all the while perceiving on a vast plethoric landscape, extroverted intuitive, extroverted thinking data, this gives the type an incredible leadership ability, but it also allows the type to connect to their sense of values. And this is why, much like the ISTJ, I assign a kind of divine connection to this type. But to the ISTJ, I assign the role of a war priest, someone who is not only channeling the power of their god through their strong sense of conviction, who is not only enforcing order upon the external world, but is also in a leadership position, is monitoring the strategic atmosphere, and prioritizing strategy over everything else. And now let's take the introverted feelers. First of all, I want to start with the ISFP. I give the ISFP the shaman class because the introverted feeling, introverted intuitive dominant stack is so kaleidoscopic and self-transformative in nature. As oftentimes this type is such a natural actor because they are able to fit themselves into any human archetype they want to and understand their emotions on an archetypal level. This goes hand in hand with a kind of a shape-shifting capacity. All the while, the extrovert sensing, extrovert thinking, divergent stack gives this type an intrinsic connection to the concrete world, all the while understanding it on a limbic abstract level. And this oftentimes gives the ISFP a very mysterious and even mystical 
personality. And so oftentimes they have an incredibly unique character, they have an incredibly unique identity, an incredibly unique way of understanding on an existential level the underlying fabric of reality. And now let's take the INFP. I believe the only way you can ever convince an INFP to engage in combat, again painting the extreme of the time, is when that martial pursuit is intrinsically linked to self-actualization, to discovering their true self, their true path. And this is why I assign the INFP the monk class, because they're incredibly wise, incredibly reflective, and they spend so much time in solitude, connecting with the very depths of who they are. All the while having this incredible divergent extrovert thinking, extroverted intuitive perception of the world that enables them to overcome with grace any situation they are faced with. To seamlessly weave into the extroverted intuitive, extroverted thinking atmosphere and overcome a situation with a great deal of precision and reliability. The monks spend so much time in meditation, so much time in reflection, and they see the pursuit of combat as itself a form of meditation, as itself a form of self-actualization. And it is through this agenda that the INFP will so often engage with external mediums. And finally, let's take the extroverted feelers. First up, I'll take the ESFJ. I assign this type of class of paladin. The ESFJ is embodied through that unconscious introverted feeling, introverted intuition, a heroic archetype, according to the needs of the extroverted feeling, extroverted intuitive world. Introvert thinking, introvert sensing, in the divergent stack makes this type very sure of what is right, of what is logical, of what the correct framework is to apply to any given situation. And it is this combined with their force of character and their need to uphold the values and traditions of their community that makes this type so well suited to the role of paladin. They're incredibly charismatic while also having this incredibly well-refined martial skill set. And of course, with extrovert feeling and extrovert intuition in the dominant stack, they have an incredible ability of persuasion. And this is why the Paladin so oftentimes goes hand in hand with a high diplomacy score, backed up as it is with this incredibly high charisma. And now let's take the ENFJ. I'm actually going to assign this type the most, in my opinion, badass out of all the classes. Because out of all the types, I believe the ENFJ is the only one with the innate sense of discipline and sheer willingness to put in hours upon hours upon hours of work necessary so as to be able to master two classes, so to speak, at once. And it is the ENFJ's need to serve society to the greatest possible extent, to serve their loved ones, to serve life even, to the greatest possible extent, that propels this sense of discipline, that propels this amazing work ethic. And so it is to the ENFJ I assign the class of Eldritch Knight, an individual who is not only an incredibly proficient martial combatant, but it was also able to learn almost an equal amount of spells to a wizard and able to seamlessly integrate spell casting into a martial combat style on the battlefield on the very front lines of combat. It is introverted thinking, introverted intuition in a divergent role that allows this type to contain this vast powerhouse of knowledge that allows the type to gauge a situation in advance and memorize spells accordingly and much like the INFJ resting before they go into the situation but then seamlessly integrating this arcane spellcasting prowess with a dominant stack that dips into from the dominant function extrovert thinking in order to be highly efficient on a martial level. So thank you so much for watching that video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. And just again, a massive disclaimer, do not take this video at face value. It is simply employing stereotypes as a kind of parody in order to demonstrate the ways in which the sum total of a cognitive stack can lend any given type a certain cognitive predisposition. So thanks again for sticking with me so far. Definitely leave a like on the video if you haven't already. It really does help the channel grow, develop, and reach new audiences. And if you haven't already done so, make sure to click that subscribe button down below with the bell icon extra to stay notified of future content. And be sure to share this video with anyone who you think will enjoy it. So I'll be back again in a few days time, but for now, take care.